Okay, well, I'll come back. So, now that we get working, um, or somewhat working game, <laughs> if you can call that, uh, at least our character is moving, let's add uh, enemies to make this a little bit more interesting. So, first thing first, we need to add an enemy object. We have a long time ago we did this add object. So, remember, right click, insert new object, and then we're gonna add a new sprite. Just click somewhere. And then we need an enemy. So we're going to do make this maybe I don't down. Okay, so right click import from strip. Remember we have a skeleton. Hmm right here. Alright. So this is our enemy and animation here uh, why don't we also add an animation for him walking so add animation we're gonna do walk down uh, right here. walk down and remember we have six frame loop this remember we have seven seven works pretty well So this is the walking animation. Okay, good. So we can exit this. All right, we got our enemy here, but we should probably scale this a little bit bigger. Okay. Ah. Remember, hold down shift to keep the proportion. All right. So we got enemy here. Oh. Okay. Look, we got enemy. So. Uh, the enemy doesn't do anything right now. That's not That's not interesting, right? Um, why don't we make it so that if we touch the enemy the our player will die All right, let's do that So how do we do this? We're back to here Okay, I think we can just get rid of this. All right, let's what's, what's, what's the if statement here if Maybe if the player touches the skeleton, then player will die. Well, okay, simple enough. How do we program this? Event sheet. Uh, let's add a new event. So if the player, hmm, when it's contacting the skeleton, right, or it's touching, so maybe when it's, it's collision, okay, so when the player it's called collision, or we can say it's overlapping in our object, meaning it's touching. So when the player is touching the uh, sprite, we should rename this. <laughs> this should be the enemy. Okay. So when the player is overlapping with the enemy, touching the enemy, basically, then the player will get destroyed. <laughs> oh, this is what I did there. I, I just. I just type in destroy here because I don't feel like scrolling around. You can you can search for a different function here if you remember what they are, or you can just look here. Anyway, we don't need this. Let's try this. So walk, touch. See how player disappeared. All right, that's the first step. Okay, but honestly, that enemy don't move. It's boring. Uh, let make the enemy chase after our player. So how do we do this? So we click on the enemy, add a behavior. Why don't we give him a, um, let's see, movement, move to behavior. We want the ghost to move to our player, right? And let's see how this works. So go to behavior, move to, max speed is 200. So that's almost as fast as our enemy, uh, our player's speed. So, um, Okay, so let's try this. So you see nothing happened here. So we need to program it apparently. Okay, so not no problem. Add event. So let's see. Well, somebody need to trigger it. When do we want the enemy to go after our player? So let's add in that behavior here. That is actually behavior called line of sight. So if the enemy see our player, 
that it will go it will move toward it okay so let's do this statement if enemy C player then and we move toward player okay so go back to the event sheet uh, if the enemy so remember the line of sight uh, when it has line of sight to an object to player line of sight meaning you can see it so when the huh, when the enemy can see the player if the enemy can see the player then we're going to have the enemy move toward so move to uh we'll move to an object we'll move to the player directly okay let's give this a try oh look at that <laughs> uh but that's kind of awkward right so let's highlight this uncheck set angle so when you change the angle of an image it will tilt it like that so if you unclick it it will not um tilt it so you go after us like this okay um all right well next thing is it seems like the enemy have like very far range right they can see our, our, our player very far away uh, why don't we limit this range a little bit so you can do that by going to behavior line of sight you see this range here that control how many pixel that you can see so why don't we give this somewhere here so by the way, over here, it will tell you the pixel amount. So this is where the uh, enemy is. It's around 500 on the Y. So right here. So if we do right here, that's 100. All right, why don't we do this 200? 200 range. Okay. So you also set obstacle, meaning like, can you can the enemy see through the solid? So this is no. Okay, so basically the enemy now only have a range of 200 pixel, and it will only go toward our uh, player if it's within that range. Okay, all right. So now that um, <laughs> okay, so now we have that. Um, what do I want to do? Oh yeah, you see, notice how the the uh, the enemy is doing the idle animation the entire time. We, we want to do this again. Uh, we want to change the animation to make it look cooler. So we want to do the same. It's moving thing, right? If the enemy is moving, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. When the enemy is moving, then we want to change the enemy animation animation to walk down. And then same thing if it's not moving, enemy is invert of moving. If an enemy is not moving, then we're gonna change the enemy animation to idle down. Okay, let's save this just in case. Alright, it's idling. Alright, it's walking, and then it's idling again. Alright, very good. Okay, so before we move on, this eventually it's getting a little complicated because we have enemies items and then we have our player items it's getting very complicated why don't we organize this a little bit so add why don't we add a uh, group okay why don't we call this the player group so everything in here is related to player and then you can click on the first one hold down shift click on the last one and drag everything in here and that will be the player group and then we have an enemy group and then we just drag everything in here ah. like this okay all right so now everything's organized you can click this thing to hide and show the different events okay so now that we have the basic of our game right except that you know our player it's keep getting killed by the enemy there's no way to fight back why don't we give a way for the uh, player to fight back and fight the enemy but we'll do that in the next video I'll see you then